Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon, Psalm 116, 16 Romans 5, 10 21. Verse 1. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. You cannot help loving God if he has heard your prayers. Have you tried him? If you have, you can join with David and thousands of others in confessing that he is a prayer hearing God and, therefore, you love him. I find the verse might be read, I love the Lord because he hears. He is always hearing. I am always speaking to him and he is always hearing me. Therefore I love him. Can you imagine a better reason for love? 2. Because he has inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. He has inclined his ear, stooped down, as it were, as you do to a sick person to catch his faintest word. He has inclined his ear. He has heard my prayer when I could hardly hear it myself. When it was such a broken prayer, such a feeble prayer, that I was afraid I had not prayed, yet he heard me. He inclined his ear and, therefore, will I call upon him as long as I live. That is, I will never leave off praying and I will never leave off praising. This is the best gratitude we can show to God. Now, if a beggar were to say to us, if you will help me today, I will beg of you as long as I live, we would not be very thankful. But when we say this to God, he is glad, for he wants us to be thus continually calling upon him. 3, 4. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the pains of hell got hold upon me, I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord, O Lord, I beseech you, deliver my soul he felt as if he had been hunted. As in hunting, they sometimes surround the stag with dogs as with a cordon, so he says, the sorrows of death compassed me. There was no getting away. I was in a circle of sorrow. Worse than that, his pains of conscience and heart were so great that he says, the pains of hell get hold upon me, got the grip of him, as though he were arrested by them as though those dogs had come so close as to seize and grasp him. Then, he says, I called. At the worst extremity he prayed. There is no time too bad to pray. When it is all over with you, still pray. Often the end of yourself is the beginning of your God. He means to get you away from every other confidence, that you may fling yourself upon him. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. And what was the prayer? A very short one, O Lord, I beseech you, deliver my soul. God does not measure prayers by the art. It is not by the length, but by the weight. If there is life, earnestness, heart in your prayer, it is all the better for being short. Read the Bible through and you will scarcely find a long prayer. Prayers that come from the soul are often like arrows shot from the bow, quick, short, sharp. And God hears such prayers as these, O Lord, I beseech you, deliver my soul. 5. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous. Wonderful combination, gracious and yet righteous. And if you want to know how this can be, look at Calvary, where Jesus dies that we may live. Oh, the sweet wonders of that cross, where God the Saviour loved and died, where there was the justice of God to the fullest and the mercy of God without bound. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous. 5, 6. Yes, our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. Those that have such a deal of wit may take care of themselves, but, the Lord preserves the simple the straightforward, the plain-minded, those who believe his word without raising questions. The Lord preserves the simple. 6. I was brought low and he helped me. Oh, many of you can say this, I trust, and if you cannot, I hope you will before long, I was brought low and he helped me. Romans 5, 10 21. 10. For if, when we were enemies, 
we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. This is a grand argument for the safety of all believers, having a threefold edge to it. If he reconciled his enemies, will he not save his friends? If he reconciled us, will he not save us? If he reconciled us by the death, will he not save us by the life of his son? 11. And not only so the blessings of the covenant of grace rise tier upon tier, mountain upon mountain, alp on alp. When you climb to what seems the utmost summit, there is a height yet beyond you. And not only so. 11. But we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Then he begins to explain the great plan of our salvation. 12. Therefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned in that one man. 13. 14. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Children died who had not actually sinned, themselves, but died because of Adam's sin. 1517. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift for if through the offense of one, many are dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one, to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense, by Adam's sin, 17, 18. Death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. All who are in Christ are justified by Christ just as all who were in Adam were lost and condemned in Adam. The alls are not equal in extent, equal as far as the person goes in whom the alls were found. And this is our hope, that we, being in Christ, are justified because of his righteousness. 19. 20. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover the law entered, the law of Moses. 20. That the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. It makes us see sin where we never saw it. It comes on purpose to drive us to despair of being saved by works. It bids us look to the flames that Moses saw, and shrink and tremble with despair. 21. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord.